What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I want to take this particular time to acknowledge our brother, Go Black to Africa. I, I met him, I believe, at the end of September. He came to Uganda and spent about two weeks. Uh, he's a really stand-up brother. He really lives what he's talking about. I've met some people online, and they say one thing on the Internet, and then they do another, but that's not him. He is who we say he is, right? He has the same mannerisms as he is online. And the brother has been um, really weighing in on the Kanye West, Kyrie Irving situation, and, um, and he's also believing that they're right. The system is out to get them. But I want to play this particular clip. And I want you guys to listen to it. I'm saying that, yeah, we should stand for Kyrie and also Kanye. But my thing of it is that we're going to support them for what? To go back into the system? Go back into the belly of the beast? Or are we going to be there by their sides when they walk away? Now, that's support. When you support somebody when they've walked away, they sever the umbilical cord, standing on their own feet, showing the path, showing the way that we can do for self. Because at the end of the day, if we are there to support them so they can get bigger contracts, they can become a puppet, they'll become a stronger force for the system. It does nothing for anybody. But he who walks away and thumbs their nose at the system and says, I don't need you, is a powerful Pan-African person that can show the world that we have the power not them so as you brothers have heard he brings out some very interesting and key points and the points are why are we fighting for Kyrie and Kanye to go back to the system and I'm going to explain that because the brother has enough knowledge of our people to, to, to know that but let me say what I believe, because there was a movie back in the 90s called The Fear of the Black Hat. But now black people have the fear of the black utopia. People talk pro-black all day, or they talk the system of white supremacy all day. But you're afraid of living in a black world. Operated, maintained, and governed by blacks so everything that black people fight for is to be closer to the whites they they do it without even knowing it okay and and what you're seeing is with Kyrie Irving you you will come out and protest so he can go back to the NBA so he can so Kanye West to go back to Adidas and for Kanye to get a better deal with the untouchable community but black people are never going to lobby to fight to do things for themselves. You're never going to see that. Black people are never going to fight to be independent as much as they can from everything else. Black people will not build. Everything blacks complain about. It's, it's you know, if I'm closer to whites, I can complain about racism. Okay. But if, if, if racism is ever solved, and let's say they give blacks some money to govern themselves, they won't take it. Because they got to be closer to those people to create jobs for them, to create opportunities for them. And that's really what we want. We want the oppressors to still create and give us stuff. And we want to fight to be closer to them. And we guise it under the, the guise of black power. Kyrie Irving don't want to do nothing in a black utopia. He know he can't get no money with y'all. Can I be honest? You think Kanye West wants to be in a black utopia? Let me tell you something. Kanye West came to Uganda in 2013. If you like ownership of stuff, if you like being off the grid as much as you want to be, Africa's the perfect place to be. It ain't like a country wouldn't give him whatever he wants. Kanye West can come and start anything in Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, Nigeria. 
they would love for him to get it. And the money in the market in Nigeria is there. He would get hand over fist money, but it's black money. And black money is worthless to a lot of people. You want to complain about these folks, but there you are begging at Skechers. You want to complain about these people, but there you are begging to go back to the NBA. You want to complain about these people, Kaepernick, but there you are going to the NFL. Are pretending you want to go back to the NFL. There you are. Because you're afraid of a black utopia. You don't really want it. And a lot of people, you're fighting for what? When Farrakhan, well, y'all don't like my commentary on Farrakhan. Oh, he's afraid of knowledge of self. That's what he was saying the Jews were. Or, and uh, y'all, uh, y'all don't want to let him be a man. And y'all come from us. And all of this, you know, talking and, you, you know, with the propensity of going anywhere, nowhere, you know, uh, pontificating all day, talking about nothing. That's what Farrakhan was doing. You come from us. What does that got to do with anything? How, how has that helped you in the community to say you come from us? That makes it look that makes us look bad. If you come from us and they're doing better than us, what does that say? So stop using that excuse, even if it's true. I believe it's true, but it's, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. It's stupid to say that. I wish black people would just leave that argument alone. We look foolish. How can somebody come after you, from you, and they de- beat you at something? It's almost like immigrants who come to the United States, can't speak English, and they beat white Americans. And you use the argument. We fought for you to be in this country, and we used the same thing for, for the Africans too, right? But then, while it may be true, how does it make you look? Okay? If you come to Africa and start doing well, and these people will say, you're doing well, but you know you come from us. What does that guy do or anything? Especially if, if people don't identify with you, it don't matter if you cover them or not. You got folks right now that say, don't tell me nothing about Africa, and you give them a DNA, and it says 78% West African. So we got to stop the foolishness, okay? The reality is that our people don't want to be with each other and don't trust each other to try to build something outside of what we already have, like Jewish people do. Building up their homeland. Oh, well, where's our homeland? Well, you can go to, you can do the DNA test to go to Sierra Leone. You can put the investment in going to some of these African countries and nothing stop you from doing that. But no, people want to fight. We're fighting for nothing. Kyrie is going back to the NBA. Okay, may be able to go back to Nike. Kanye West may be able to go back to Adidas. And what did you fight for? For them to stay there in the belly of the beast, as you guys said. And who can respect people like that? Who? Where? Where do they do that at? Okay. Where do they do that at? And again, black people do not want to fight to try to be as independent as possible, like Hispanics. We don't try. And it's not in the agenda. Our agenda is let's completely complain about what happens to us. And we don't want to fail by ourselves because we know we're going to fail by ourselves. So let's just keep complaining to these white people that, you know, whatever they give us, we can never detach ourselves from them. We're too scared to do that. We don't want to fail. Just like feminism for some of the guys. They have that argument. Women don't want to fail. Black people don't want to fail either. Black people are afraid of white people letting them go. Are afraid of detaching them. We can talk all that mess all we would come from you. And, and you see Farrakhan still in the USA, ain't he? He, he not nowhere in, in, in Liberia or in Nigeria. No, he's, he's there. Want to know why? Because Farrakhan understand where the money's at. Just like almost all other people. They know what's going on. They don't trust uh, black people to do the right thing in, in Africa. No, he feels safe right here. Because if that was the case, they would have went to Liberia and built along. They're afraid to do that. Most blacks are. 
but we talk tough to the whites when we're afraid that they're going to let us go. And at every chance, if whites say, go build for yourself, do something for yourself, the blacks are going to keep hollering. Racism. Racism. What do you mean you don't want to you want to leave us alone? Huh? We're not going to like that. And the brother's right. So, guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of Slippery Drunk. Appreciate you for all that you do. We're out.